All right, welcome back to track two for day two of the Plone Conference 2021. With me is Jens Klein, live from Sorrento in the, the fan zone, having a wonderful time, <clears throat> having a wonderful time in wonderful weather. I really hate him. Uh, as many of you know, Jens has been in the Plone community since pretty much the very beginning. He's been um, a maintainer of all sorts of packages, a creator of many packages in Plone, Plone Core. Um, I believe he was also a release manager quite quite a while ago too, but he's created so many uh, tools for Plone. It's amazing. Uh, he's a founding member of the Blue Dynamics Alliance, and uh, I just learned uh, that he started programming on a ZX81, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so uh, Jens is going to be talking to us about a new installer for Plone, and I'm looking forward to this. Thank you. Jens, go ahead. Ah, thank you, Kim. Okay. As most of you know, um, the current install of Clone doesn't work for now new setup um, with the uh, front end and the back end, and everything's new and shiny. And we have today different uh, ways to install Python packages. And so we are sort about forging a new installer. And yeah, let's go. So now there won't be an installer anymore. So, okay, folks, done. Any questions? No, just kidding. Um, it is um, for sure a way to install clone. Uh, and um, let's have a look at what we had and what we get. So in past here, it's a unified installer. It tries to do everything at once. And um, in this former times, right? The stone age of uh, whatever installing Python packages, um, build out was a good idea and it streamlined everything. And um, so we had a tool to install Plone and then the installer was woven around this um, uh, build out setup. And so everyone was able to install on his, on his or her machine, um, the Plone system as a Zio server and to Zio clients, that was the idea. And it even installed a Python from scratch and compiled it. So it was really everything at once. And um, that is very complex. And it's very, has many shell and Python scripts. It is difficult to maintain and also, um, and different systems and different Linux distributions, new Mac versions, whatever things are breaking and it's difficult to test. We already um, uh, uh, skipped uh, building Python for the 5.2 version. Uh, and we have here a problem uh, with the audio. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I have a technical problem. Just a moment. Okay, here we are. So we, are, we decided we don't want to use this old unified installer that had its time and works for the use case, but we need to rethink everything. So it won't be used for Plone 6. And in future, we want to use the standard tooling. Um, we have the tooling for Python and we have the to, uh, tooling for the Node uh, NPM world. And Python and Node can be uh, shown as a precondition. You, you, you can install it. There are ways to install it on every system. So we don't need to care about it and both are broadly supported. So we use pip and npm in these environments to install our stuff. And on top of that, if you like, or if you're lazy, you might want to use containers and Docker, and, or if you want to be efficient, um, to lower also the barrier for entry and also to make it easier to uh, deploy your clone site. And then you can use Docker, Kubernetes, Ansible, and something like that to deploy your site. So no installer, I didn't lie, but we have tooling around. In fact, it looks like um, that we can do pip install plone or pip install plone.volto. Um, and this happens in some virtual env, and this is also standard tooling. We don't need to invent it and you can pip install add-ons, that's the idea. 
Then you can use the SOAP tooling like MK Whiskey instance script to uh, create an instance on run with VSGI to um, run the site. But we will probably provide more tooling to make this easier to create the site. But this is not really there. There are starts, but we will see. Um, roughly uh, installing the front end is like npm run yo init at plone slash volto, which is um, the yeoman. Um, yeoman, what is it? Um, uh, tool or script or it's a tool to automate things in uh, in this uh, node and JavaScript applications. And um, yeah, then you run Jan to create the project and start the front end with Jan run. That's the base. And yeah, when you if you now cry stop, I don't want to do all this on my machine. So have a Python virtual and Python um, node environment and everything set and set it up. That sounds complex and it is. Then use containers. That's the base idea. And we have this um, three containers and the one container to rule them all. So in fact, it means that we have a uh, web server that uh, the entry point, and then we have uh, the front end, the back end, and the database where we um, have it as a, as a um, this triplet where front end Volta runs, back end is the API server, and the database is then where you store your data. And the state is stored, as we say. So, in fact, we can run this in a, any container environment, in Docker, any way how you are, run it, or in Kubernetes. And the database might be a zero server with a blob storage, but we recommend now these days to have a real storage, or at least I do it, and most I talk this, <laughs> uh, Postgres database, and uh, even store the blobs into the Postgres databases uh, has some advantages. NiceSQL or Oracle also supported by real storage, but I have not that much experience with this style. Um, Advantages of use containers, it's easy to start with. Um, you can even do local development with containers. It integrates well with CI or the continuous integration, continuous development processes. It scales very well. Um, and one more, the most important part to me is if I have a project and deploy a project, the container, the image of the container is my version of my application at this state. So I really can build the container, the image, and this is a version of it. In past, we did set up own custom uh, uh, PyP servers and created releases of each package and pushed them and wired them together in our build out. But these days you can really do like source checkouts in a container and then it's a frozen version. You really skip all this parts. Then another important part is that you have uh, isolated environments, you can easily have a testing and staging in a live environment, always the whole set, maybe with different scale. And all these environments are exactly the same if you like it. So if you have used this version of the container, it is exactly the same environment. It is really repeatable, everything, and that's important. Um, if you have uh, Plon6 uh, slash Volto um, example, then you may have two Git repositories or one with two directories versus backend and your front end customizations are in, or maybe more packages if you like. Then you have your Docker file in there and then you set up a, um, in GitLab or maybe in GitHub or whatever you use to do your CI, Jenkins is possible too. Um, a workflow that builds, so maybe tests everything, runs the test, if it works, then you build everything into an image, push it to your a registry you use, which is probably the GitLab container registry. And then you can even auto deploy this to the testing server and even to the staging or live server, how you choose to um, uh, create your deployment workflow. 
this classic UI is much simpler because you just have to build one image and deploy it. Now it's, in fact, it's the same, it's not simpler. And um, yeah, it's then the same, but you only have the backend. Sure, you can use Ansible and similar tools. I won't, but it's possible and it's the same as before, um, but it's compared to this using container thingy, it's much more, more effort, but it works. And you just use the tooling like pip and npm to build the stuff and you're done. Yeah, and this all is work in progress. Yeah, that's my disclaimer here. So we are on the sprint here at uh, Sorrento. We built uh, already, or Erico built already beforehand um, the plum backend and plum front and uh, containers or images, and you can use them and they are working, but we will polish them and something will change in there. But um, we can have a look at it. So you have this official Docker images and in the plone front end repository are also examples. So also on GitHub under the plone organization under plone dash front end or plone dash backend. And there's also a deployment uh, mini training uh, It's not official now and then may change a lot in future. And there will um, be other resources how to deploy this stuff. And yes, this needs help. So that's a, that's a thing. We uh, need help. And that's also the reason the talk is short. And I really like to have a long Jitsi afterwards with you uh, all interested in deployment. And this means I, we need primary use cases, how you work with it, how you plan to work with it. And we can discuss this now. And that's very important. Uh, we discussed it here at Sorrento, but we are only a few people and we need much more inputs and ideas and questions. And even if you can't join the Jitsi because you watch the recording, um, I can say just try the new setup, ask questions. Um, if your use case is not covered or you think it's not covered, ask also questions at communityplone.org. If it's for you, for some reason inconvenient to use what we do, tell us how to improve. And as anyway with Plone, code, Plone, whatever, if you found an issue, please create an issue at um, githubcom uh, slash Plone slash products of CMF Plone, if you don't know where to put it else. And uh, if you fix the problem, which is much better, but not everybody is able to do, then please create pull requests so we can review. So this is my short talk for this. And now I'll join the Jitsi room and I hope lots of people are watching this and we have plenty of people in there and please prepare your questions. See you in some minutes. Thank you, Jens. I'm really excited to be able to do something like pip install plone. Maybe low. This is wonderful. Uh, we need your help, your feedback, your input. Please join Jens in the Jitsi. Again, it's the blue button below the video here. Um, I'll also post a link to the Jitsi in the Slack. Um, we are looking for feedback, suggestions, improvement, ideas, and possibly your help. And